This is a demonstration video of using curl um, to test a RESTful web service. Um, what is REST? Um, quickly, REST is a form of architecture. Its uses include vari various services. Um, examples might be central processing or data storage medium and an interface to that data store. Um, and then, of course, there's combined applications um, which would become a centralized data store and processing um, storage. What is REST versus uh, another common term, RESTful? Um, RESTful simply means that the software in question follows the REST architectural pattern. Um, what is REST? It's Again, it's an architectural pattern. It uh, takes advantage of existing technologies such as HTTP, but not necessarily HTTP. Um, clients generally request information in a structured fashion. Data is then is returned in a structured fashion. In chat to class, JSON is the data packaging solution, and HTTP is our um, our transport solution. Uh, okay, JSON quick intro. It's JavaScript object notation. Um, JSON is an acronym for that. And JSON is simply a data structure to represent related or groups of data. Um, it's the advantage of JSON is that it's easily machine readable as well as human readable. There's a lot more on JSON at json.org. Um, HTTP verb. Um, REST in our application utilizes HTTP, HTTP verbs to indicate the intention of the request. Now, what are HTTP verbs? Uh, common verbs are get and post. I, those are probably familiar to you. In chat to class, we also use the put and delete verbs, and both of these are defined as part of the standard. In chat to class, our purpose for the RESTful web service is to store data in a centralized manner. Uh, we also access the data via a combination of REST-based classes and JSON. Um, we do a minor bit of processing on the data once it's in the data store also. To test the RESTful web service, there's various approaches. Um, a browser might be one approach, and of course you can build a custom program to deal with it. Um, we are using curl. Um, Curl is a program. It's an open source program. Um, it supports a lot more than just HTTP. It's a very versatile program and worth knowing and learning about. Um, in my demonstration here, I'm going to be using the enterprise servlet. An enterprise in chat to class defines the organization using the program. So an example of an enterprise might be DePaul University. The server will be running locally on my computer. Um, you'll see localhost um, with the port of 8888. Um, the port 8888 is used by Google App Engine and is not required for REST service. Um, a RESTful service can really run on any port, but it's generally ran on port 80. My demonstration here is going to be on Ubuntu Linux. Um, curl, however, is also available for Windows and Mac. Um, the syntax between all of the platforms is the same. Um, so what is the basic structure of a curl call? Um, curl is a command line program, first of all. Um, its basic usage is the program name, curl, um, followed by um, the URL um, in my slide here. It's HTTP um, www.depaul.edu. Flags, or switches in some, as some people call them, are indicated via hyphens. Uh, Windows uh, generally uses forward slashes. Since curl has Linux root, it roots, it uses dashes. Um, so the full basic usage is curl, your, any options you need, and the URL last. So in my demonstration, we have um, we're going to be demonstrating the four verbs: get, post, put, and delete. Um, for chat to class, we've defined 
the get verb to retrieve an object, and in our case it will return a JSON representation of the enterprise. Post will create a new object, put updates an existing object, and delete will delete an object. With that, let's get to it. So I've got a couple of windows here. I've got the terminal, which is where I'm going to run curl. I've got a JSON formatting website, which will be helpful in displaying the data. And I've got some predefined um, curl calls here. This is just so I don't have to type them out. Um, my keyboard gets a little bit clacky when I'm recording, given where the mic is. So I'm going to avoid typing as much as possible. First here, we have a simple git request. Git is the default operation of a curl. Um, whenever you type in a URL in a web browser, it performs, and you hit enter, it performs a git. It's the most basic operation, I'd say. So, let's take a look at what this gives us. So we just put it into the, um, to the command line, hit enter, it gives us some headers. This is, curl gives us this because we've added the dash um, i and dash h here. Um, and the accept application slash json is just telling the server that we ex are accepting json back. That's all optional. It's just a part of the standard, if you will. So the, everything here that I've just highlighted is the response from json. So we'll drop it into the website, fix that, and now we get formatted JSON. You can see um, the square bracket indicates the start of an array. Anything inside squirrely brackets is a JSON object, and common delimits a new object. So this is an array of JSON objects. So um, now we have two options here. Our first one here where we just call the enterprise servlet, given that this is Java, will return all of the objects in the data store. If I add a parameter here, a query string parameter, uh, enterprise underscore ID equals 42, we're going to query the enterprise servlet for just object ID 42. This interface is something the team came up with. It's not really part of REST, um, but this is in part why we need curl, is to test things like this. So I'm going to copy this, throw this in here, and hit enter. And again, gave us the same headers along with a, a, a JSON string. And this is just a the response. i format this here so it's a bit prettier to look at. And there it is. We got a description back, the ID we requested. You'll notice my URL here is requesting enterprise ID equal 42, and the name that we gave this. So the next step, we're going to look at a post operation. This is where we actually create a new enterprise. So in our curl call, we have obviously the program name, the URL, and the payload. Um, the payload is the data we're posting to the server. By including the dash D and a key equal value type pair, we're telling the server that we're going to post this data that changes the method the server is going to run on the back end. So we'll ex execute this, and you'll see it returned a simple enterprise ID equals 58, or colon 58. That means it created enterprise ID 58. We can show that by grabbing this guy here and changing this variable, if you will, 58, enter, and now it retrieved it from the data store and returned it. So this is actually being, this JSON is being built by the server and sent back. Now a put is updating the data. So if you'll notice, the description here is the enterprise was created for the screencast. This is going to modify 
the description to modify during screencast. The I should back talk to the backslashes in front of the equals. So since it's a string within a string, we have to de delimit quotes. So we do that with a simple backslash, and then the character we're delimiting. Uh, fairly common in quoted strings. So let's execute the put. Oh, um, the dash x put um, indicates to curl that we want to do a um, put call. Um, we are still using the dash d to send the payload. So the dash x put tells the server that we're going to execute a put to the HTTP server in this case. Um, the HTTP server is localhost 888, and it's a Google App Engine program. Whoops, it's because I didn't replace the variable. And we're working with 58. 58, and there we go. And it, gives, uh, it gave us back the enterprise ID, 58 and success equals true. So we can re-query that with the standard git just to see the results in full. And there you can see the description now comes back as a modifier during screencast. Finally, we have delete. Um, again, we're using the dash x to delete in are in the chat to class server. Um, we simply pass, uh, we are executing delete, and then we pass enterprise slash and the query string parameter. Again, key value pair just like a get. So we'll grab this, throw this into here, change our parameter, and when we execute this, the item will be deleted. And it was, it gave us success equals true. And if we did a git again, remember we've been getting back responses in the form of that. This will now return an empty pair of braces because it's not going to find any data. And rather than throwing an error or an exception back to the client, just make it simple, return empty data. And there you go. So that is the extent of the screencast. I hope you found this helpful as an introduction to curl and maybe even uh, RESTful web services. Thank you very much.